Okay, welcome back. Um, we we have now the, the second and last of our uh, tandem uh, contributed talks, not the last part of, this, of the uh, symposium because we will have yet another talk later. And so let me, let me introduce you uh, Chaun Guyen, uh, who will, will speak no. about quantum theory. No. Otfried oh, Kinder. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's in reverse order in my code. <laughs> sorry. So they both will talk about quantum theory. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. And um, yeah, thank you for organizing this nice workshop. And thank you for giving the opportunity to talk. Yeah, so actually, I'm Otfried Gunner. So in the program, it was a little bit different spelled, but okay, there was some confusion. And I will talk a little bit about the history of quantum steering. I should first say that I'm not, I'm a physicist, I'm not an historian and so on, yeah, so I'm just doing some hobby in some sense. Um, okay, good. So, and I will talk about the period roughly between 1935 and 2007. Yes, it looks a little bit less if I'm talking about some dead person who just, yeah, was born in 1935 and, um, died then in 2007, but actually um, Chao will tell you for later that it's still a live topic here, yeah, so good. So what I will talk about, essentially this is the overview of my slides. So first I will um, talk about the EPR argument, or actually two versions of it, that's why I wrote some EPR arguments. Then I will talk about a little bit about Schrödinger's letters, mainly to Einstein, where he discussed this EPR argument and where essentially the, you find the first idea of steering. Um, then I will talk a little bit about Schrodinger's papers, well, not all of them, mainly two of them, where he also, which we, he wrote in reply to the EPR argument and where he essentially formally developed the idea of steering. And yeah, these two papers were written in 35 and 36. And actually there was a long time of silence. Um, um, namely, in the meantime, and this is what I consent, this, there's some mathematical results in the Schrodinger paper. And this was actually rediscovered several times. That's why I call it the S plus theorem. So for this plus stands for several other names, you could mention them, um, who discovered this result independently of Schrodinger. And um, yes. And um, finally, I come then really to the task of quantum steering. So how you can formalize Schrodinger's idea in a more modern language and see it in connected sense to quantum information processing. Good. So let's start CPR argument. So you probably, most of you know this paper, but let me just recall the main argument shortly again. So first you need two definitions, which are things like element of reality. So um, um, you say an element is of, uh, well, there must be some element of reality if you can predict something um, with certainty and without disturbance. And the second thing is the notion of a complete theory, which means that any element of the theory has also some counterpart in um, any, element of reality has also some counterpart in the theory. And this is more or less the definition where they start from. Then um, they start the argument, and just, I would just, I mean, shortly explain the main logical structure. So they start with the sense you can have essentially two possibilities. Either you say that position and momentum, that they are some form elements of reality, but then you have to accept that psi is not a complete description of the um, um, system. Or you say um, X and P um, do not have a joint reality, and then you may say that Psi is a complete description. Yeah, you're not forced to say that, but um, at least this is compatible with the view that Psi is a um, um, complete description. And then there starts the argument, which is essentially, you write down some wave function, which has two orthogonal expansions. And this is actually more or less the notation used by EPR, where, where you have something here, this is what we nowadays would call Alice's side, and this is what we call Bob's side. But of course, in this time, they didn't talk about Alice and Bob. And the, the important point is that this wave function has two different um, expansions of this type. And then you can measure on Alice's side in this U basis or in this V basis. And depending on the measurement you make and so the result that you get, you get either the state psi k or phi i. And more concretely, you can um, write down such a state where these um, operators, where these wave functions are then eigenfunctions of the position and momentum. And this means that then the values of x and p for Bob can be predicted. And from that, EPR then draws a conclusion that they say, okay, 
So if the wave function is complete, which means that part R is, I is wrong, then we can use this wave function to do all these calculations, and then we um, um, arrive at the conclusion that X and P have a joint reality, which means that this second assumption is wrong. So from that, it has to follow that the first assumption is right. Huh? I mean, okay, there are some additional assumptions then, we're going to have the problem of joint reality and so on. Um, I don't, don't want to go into details. I just want to re recall the main argument and also maybe you realize from that that this is, from the logical structure, already quite a complicated argument. So, there's another version of the same, or well, not actually, a similar version, and I'll call it the E48 argument, which was actually more or less Einstein's version, and the paper I refer to was published in 48, um, and that's why I call it the E48 argument. And this is in some sense a simplified version. And you start essentially with two possibilities, namely, which are similar to the ones before, easy to say X and P have definite values before some measurement, and then you have to accept that Psi is not a complete description. Or you say the values of X and P are somehow created during a measurement, what really is precise, ever this precisely means. But this, you might um, then say, is compatible with at least with a complete description. And then from this, Einstein claimed it follows that two different Psi um, have to describe two different physical situations. And then, these are the two possibilities. You make one assumption, which is the locality assumption. Namely that you say, the if you have a bipartite system, then the physical reality on one part is independent on what happens on the other side. Yeah, and if you um, yeah, come from relativity theory, you might believe that. And then essentially Einstein makes this argument, and this is then rather short. You essentially take your sense the EPR start again, you make the measurements, and then obviously, I mean, as I explained to you before, the wave function of the second particle depends on the choice of the measurement. And this, at this point, you already arrive, in some sense, at a, well, not a contradiction, but as a statement, that if you now assume locality, you have the situation that two different wave functions describe the same physical reality, because the real physical situation has not changed according to the locality assumption, but there are two different wave functions describing it. So, um, Einstein concludes this, um, that this point um, two has, has to be wrong, and this means that um, the, wave, um, the wave function is not a complete description. Okay, so why is this relevant? I mean, I mean, some remarks. Yeah, first, I mean, I think it's well known that Einstein was not really happy with the EPR paper, and there are different things. I mean, I think he didn't like Podolsky so much, and it was translated, and anyways. Yeah, so, um, um, clearly, I was, and this is also very clear from the Einstein's letters, one that he wrote to Schrödinger, yeah, that he clearly was clear in favor of the second argument. Yeah, in one of his letters, for instance, he writes, in a really nice sense, so I just quoted from German, whether these wave functions phi b and phi b bar, which are more or less these two wave functions that you can have, whether these are eigenfunctions or some observables, um, yeah, is mir wurscht, which means, if you translate to English, I, do, I really don't care. Yeah, so it's, it's quite a strong statement. Okay, from that you can see that for Einstein also this perfect correlations, which you have in the EPR argument, I mean the perfect correlation between measurements, were not essential. Yeah, essentially it's not a statement about measurement results, it's a statement about wave functions. Okay, good. Now, I mentioned already that there has been some correspondence between Schrödinger and um, Einstein about the problem. And so let's have a short look what they um, wrote. So first, um, I should say, of course, Schrödinger corresponded with many people, and also with many people about the EPR argument. Um, if you read the letters, they're partly technical, so they will find really mathematical derivations and proofs, which are also essentially find later in papers. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's not only um, text. And actually, if you want to read them, there's a, a well edition from um, Mayen, who was more published, all of them with a lot of annotations and so on, so with a lot of details. Yeah, they're very accessible. So, now in one of these letters, you find essentially then this statement, yeah, which I maybe um, directly switch to the English translation, or the English translation is the main part. <laughs> 
which is a letter um, yeah, in, in, in July 35, where he somehow recalls um, yeah, all the discussions with Einstein and so on. And he says, okay, we, we discussed it all before in, in Berlin and so on, so it's, 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 it's from the settled case. And um, he says, yeah, all the others told me that there's no such incredible magic in the sense that the system in one side, he calls it America, gives you some position Q equal to six if I perform something on the European system, or it gives me Q equal to five if I perform something else. And this would be what we call signaling nowadays, that you can really, by choosing something on one system, you could signal something to the other thing. Yeah? Um, um, but this was, of course, completely clear to him. I just repeat myself, it doesn't have to, be, it's of course not true that it's like that, the EP argument, but it has, doesn't have to be so bad in order to be silly. So, in principle, his point is that I can, by changing, or by doing something on the European system, steer the American system um, into a state which is where either Q is sharp, or the position, position eigenstate, or where the momentum is sharp. And for him, this is also magic. Yeah, so this is clearly the idea that it's not about signaling, it's not about that one side measures something or decides them to measure and gives some information to other, but by decision making a decision on the measurement, you somehow influence the state. So, yeah, this is actually the direct reply to this letter I showed you before, or where I had this short quote. So in the letter before, Einstein just explained his view of this E48 argument. Yeah, so where we skipped his more simplified argument. And essentially, this idea, Schrödinger, then developed rigorously in two papers. And, okay, this is what I want to, want to explain you now. So these are the two papers. Actually, they have more or less the same title. Yeah, so one is called Discussion of Probability Relations Between Separated Systems, and one is called Probability Relations Between Separated Systems. So this is the first one from 35, and this is the second one from 36. So, what does it do here? So essentially, I try to formulate it in modern language. In the first paper, he gives something like a proof of the Schmidt decomposition. I mean, this is for those of you who are somehow familiar with quantum information theory, one of the basic things that you learn more or less in the first lecture or second lecture or whatever. Yeah, that essentially you um, can, any pure state can become decomposed like that, where these are real positive coefficients, and this is an orthogonal basis for Alice's side, and this is an orthogonal basis for Bob's side. And from this decomposition, um, so he, um, first you have some perfect correlations because now if you measure BK, you will definitely get the states AK. And also he shows that this um, decomposition is unique, yeah, unless maybe the Schmidt decomposition, the Schmidt coefficients are all the same or several of them are the same. He also shows them some statement extending more or less this EP argument as he says, okay, in the usual EPR wave function, you only want to predict um, position or momentum. But he says, okay, let's consider we have an arbitrary function of position and momentum. Then there's always some suitable measurement on the other side, which allows us to predict this one. Yeah, so that means these perfect correlations do not hold me for X and P, but also for um, other functions. And yes, and I should stress that all these things essentially are taken from letters to Einstein and from Lauer. Yeah, so this is a so many principles and systems, summary of two of these letters. <laughs> okay, then he comes to the second, let's come to the second paper. And this is more the paper affiliated to steering. So this starts with a discussion about density matrices. Yeah, I mean, you know density matrices are essentially the case where you know just have some pure states and you have some probabilities and they give you some simple matrix. And then the question is essentially, okay, Obviously, you can find examples where you have two times, two different decompositions and they give you the same matrix. And the question is, how can you relate this to two different um, ensembles in a sense, what is the relation between these and these that they give the same matrix? And what he proved is these things give you the same matrix, density matrix, if and only if this relation holds where there's some unitary here. In a second, Yes. Then he applies this, and this is now um, related more or less to entanglement and steering. Now let's consider, again, a bipartite state and consider something like in the Schmidt decomposition. Now you can ask, 
I have, if I just throw away Bob's um, Alice's particle, then I get something like a reduced state on Bob's side. And um, the question is, if I can also, I can make a measure in FAK here, then I get essentially this assemblage here of, 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 of the thing. But the question is, if I make another measure, I get, get maybe something else. And the question is, which of these things you can realize by a suitable measurement on a first subsystem? Yeah, so I mean, this reduced state has many decompositions. Yeah, and the question is, which of them you can realize just by making a measurement on the first system and then getting the corresponding results with the probabilities? And the answer is very simple. You can realize everything. Yeah, so as any decomposition, for any such decomposition, you find a suitable measurement on Alice's side that gives you um, um, this result. I mean, if you look in the paper, the statement is a little bit hidden because it's only in words. It's not, yeah, so what, it's, it's, it's clearly there. Okay, what is the conclusion now for Schrödinger? I mean, so actually he draws, I would say, quite strong conclusions. So he makes a distinction whether the measurements on Alice's side um, just give information about the state on the other side or whether they change the state on the other side. This, of course, depends a little bit on your favorite interpretation of the wave function. So if you, for instance, believe that the wave function is nothing but a probability distribution, then this distinction must not, doesn't make much sense. Yeah? But he says, okay, it can be accepted that if you measure something, you get some information about the state. It's completely fine. But he cannot accept that if you make some measurement on one side, you change really the wave function. Yeah? And from that, he draws quite strong conclusions, namely that you should not describe a composite system by such a Schmidt decomposition, but you should essentially, what he writes, you should get rid of all the phase relations between these SK, which in practice means that you have something like a decoherent state which is diagonal in the spaces. And actually nowadays we would call them states with um, zero discord, yeah? so the subset of separable states, but he believes that this is a proper, dif proper uh, description of a um, bipartite system. And he's clearly aware of this, this is really fundamentally changing quantum mechanics. Okay, good. So, now let's come to this, what I call S plus theorem. And this plus could be, well, James, Haji, Savas, Jason, Houston, Jossa, or Davut, Utas. Yeah, so there's a bunch of people. So what is the theorem, what I'm talking about? Actually, this is a statement that I had in the, um, on the last slide. Yeah, you have something like a bipartite system. And, and you ask, okay, which ensembles can you realize by making measurement on the first system? And the answer is you can do everything. And the point is that this has been proven several times completely independently. So it pops up several times in literature. And I just want to give you a short overview. So maybe the first um, um, people who proved something like that were James and Haji Savas. So, well, actually completely, I mean, they're completely independent. They are I don't know, more than 20 years between the papers, yeah, so it's not the same. So if you look in the papers by James, he was just interested in properties of density matrices and essentially proved, um, well, I call it now the first statement, that you can reach all the ensembles with this unitary transformation. Actually, from this to the second statement, this is a very close step, so it's not really um, um, a big thing. So more or less the statement is there. And um, Haji Savas essentially refers to James, and he, but he gives a different proof which is nicer, actually, yeah, I should say that in Jane's paper there's a small error, um, but um, the Haji Savas proof also works for the infinite dimension case. <coughs> yeah, so. Then, there's a paper by Jason in 89 who proves this result, and actually he proves this result from this bipartite system. I mean, what was his motivation? So he actually comes from a completely different point of view, so he looked at, uh, at some modification of the Schrodinger dynamics, and you can ask, okay, what happens if I change my Schrodinger equation? And, um, okay, then the question is how, if you change the Schrodinger dynamics, how does it extend to density matrices? And now, if you have the statement that you can reach any assemblage on one, on one side via some measurement here, then it, you can argue that this means that the change dynamics on the Schrodinger equation must give a unique, or have a unique representation on the density matrix. Because if it would depend on the decomposition, you would have run into a problem with non-signaling, because then by measuring something, you could signal. Yeah, and, and that's more or less his argument. And here's clearly the statement there. And there's finally a paper which is um, 
recent, um, where they, by Houston, Yosha, and Wouters, and they essentially are interested in properties of density matrix and derive everything um, as explained better, they don't mention Schrodinger. Okay, so why is this statement relevant today? Today, we are talking often about steering in the following sense, that we have some state between two different um, parties, and Alice can choose between one, two measurements, which is typically labeled by X, so it's not a position measurement, it's just one or two, and she gets two results, which are plus or minus, and then Bob gets a bunch of conditional states. Yeah, so depending where as plus or minus and so on. And oops. Um, then essentially you have these conditional states here, and they of course, because of the non-signal condition, if you sum them up, you get the reduced state. Now you can ask, if I have a bunch of reduced states, do they come from suitable measurements? And of course, according to Schrödinger, the answer has to be yes, because these are just decompositions of this mixed state, yeah? So any such an assemblage can be realized. And that's why it's today often quoted in the, um, in the literature of steering. But actually, I mean, so there's one example that I show, which is just a paper that I found in July, in July, where you find that it's, this is a renowned, renowned result by Jason, Houston, Yosha, and Wouters, but Schroeder is not mentioned. Yeah, this is quite a common citation. Good. So let's come to the, to the last three slides where I just try to now come back to steering in order to introduce essentially also Chow's problem that he wants to talk about. If you now ask, come back, apart from the technical results, to the question of steering. So in a sense, which states can you reach by making a measurement on one system? Then the first thing that was really, I think, discussed was a paper by Vujicic and Herbut in 1988, um, where they first give a very clear description of Schrodinger's steering ideas. They somehow strengthen this, this theorem, what I have said, because for, for infinite dimensional systems, they um, add something that, what is the range between the density matrix there and the square root of a density matrix differs a little bit. And what is interesting, they clearly see the difference to, between steering and Bell non-locality. So they discuss somehow that, yeah, so because this was 88, there was these SP experiments, and from that they say that this idea of hidden variables is ruled out, so we should forget about it. Yeah, but they say, um, we, so we, should, yeah, we expect that giving up the idea of local variables should return the focus um, of interest to quantum mechanical aspects of distant correlations, which means because steering is now some quantum mechanical aspects, it's not about some classical hidden variable, it's about steering some quantum mechanical wave function. Yeah, and then they think that it's necessary and to analyze this phenomenon further. Well, if you look, this paper has 16 citations, which is actually not much yeah, for, for the... Um, Then there was a um, version by Frank Verstraat in his PhD thesis, where he uses also steering as some building block of quantum information protocols. Namely, we can say that in teleportation, also Alice makes a measurement in order to change the state by Bob. Uh, and then this is something like a primitive there. Um, he also states this S plus theorem, and he correctly attributes this to Schrodinger. And he also introduces steering for mixed states, yeah, which was not much discussed before. Finally, and this is more or less the end of the story, or the end of my um, um, part of the story, there's a paper by Wiseman, Jones, and Doherty, where they define the, what we would call now modern notion of steering. And there, <coughs> they really see it as a kind of quantum correlation. Yeah, so you say you have something like this conditional states for Bob, and now you ask, is there some, are there some hidden states sigma lambda, and some probability distribution, so that I can write them like that with some normalization, doesn't matter, but here with some probability of the lambda and sigma lambda. And just the point is that here this p lambda is updated condition on a and x. And this means that you can say if a state of this form, originally you just had this sigma lambda with this p lambda, but now this information is updated according to the measurement x of Alice and the result a of Alice. So you can this, if you have a state of this form, you can say really that there was only some update on the information about the state, but the hidden states were the same, because the sigma lambda is the same. And this is something like, yeah, really referring to this notion of um, um, Schrodinger in his original paper. And for instance, they prove also other things that it's really non-equivalent to Bell inequalities and non-equivalent to entanglement. Okay, but that's all I want to tell you. 
Um, yes, yeah, so this is a short conclusion. Um, and yeah, thank you for your attention. Thanks very much. We, we can take a couple of quick questions if there are any. Uh, then maybe there will be a few more minutes to discuss both the, the talks together. Yes? Okay, go ahead. So the, the way Houston, Joseph, and Wooters do it is they introduce the measurement of a POVM on Alice's side, say. Yes. And they, they create arbitrary ensembles for the density operator on Bob's side. Yes. In that way. So if Schrodinger was already there, yes. that means he implicitly must have understood the, the idea. If Schrodinger had also gotten the result, then he must have implicitly already had the idea of a, of a POVM. Or presumably he introduced an ancilla and, and used um, an orthogonal measurement on a larger system. But, but he, he, he didn't make it clear, did he? No. Actually, but but when, when I read the paper years ago, I just looked it up. So I learned that Schrodinger um, knew this. I learned it from Gilles Brassard. He told me in 2005. Mm -hmm. He probably learned it from Frank. I, I, I don't know where he learned it from. I mean, if you look at the paper, it just wasn't clear to me. What but if you look at the Schrodinger paper, essentially, but if you have this this different decompositions, they can, all con con can of course have a different number of um, vectors. Yes. And um, I think he's completely aware of that. Since then, it's unitary. You have to append some zeros or something. Yeah. Like so that, it, yeah? it's really an isometry, not a not a unitary. In Maybe. some sense, yes. Yeah. And also for this, then for the second result, I mean, it's actually a little bit um, tricky because he doesn't. I mean, he makes some summation over some index, and he doesn't say how far the index goes. Uh -huh. So so in principle, you can say, I mean. I think it was clear to him that you, that you have, for some sense, have to extend it if you have more. Um, that's, that's what I've always wondered, but it just wasn't clear to me whether he had the POVM notion or whether I mean, of course, he had not, didn't have a notion of POVMs, but I think if you ask this question, for instance, if so, I mean, you have He, he must have thought extend the system. You just extend the system because the index i in his no, notion go, has no limit, essentially. That's, that's why I would say that he oh, would argue yeah. like that. So he was a genius. Yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. So let me introduce this time for real, Chao Nguyen, for uh, the, the uh, historical part of steel on quantum steel. No, no, no. This was this. Was this. Yeah, so before I uh, continue with the second part of uh, our tandem, uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for giving us a chance to talk to you today and thank all of you for being here. Um, so my next uh, task is going to be um, describe to you the modern formulation of the notion of quantum steering, or also sometimes called einstein polonsky rosen steering, uh, and its uh, application in, uh, in recent years. Um, as on, you already learned everything about the history of the concept, I will deviate immediately from the history and try to simplify things as much as possible so that it's easy to, to, to follow. Um, so I will refer to the einstein polonsky rosen thought experiment, but actually I refer to a simplified version by Baum uh, much later. Uh, in this case, you consider a very simple situation where you have two spin uh, and uh, you can uh, have uh, spin up and the first spin in state up or second spin in uh, speed, uh, in state down or uh, the other way around. And it'll make the superposition of turn with uh, 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 innocent minus sign here. Uh, what is rem remarkable about this state is that uh, EPR show that this kind of state allow you to do some sort of uh, uh, spooky action at a distance with a Question mark, I put it there, and also with an um, adjective spooky uh, translated from some word from, in German from Einstein. Um, so what does it mean? Uh, it's actually, it's a f uh, the, the, the phenomena is quite simple. Uh, the idea is the following. The same state which is written here, in this case, can be written in, in the same way of the superposition of the up and down, down and up, but now in the x direction. What does it mean? Now imagine the situation where you have Alice and Bob, 
at least how one particle go away and both how another particle and go away. Uh, and Alice now decided to make measurement on the uh, set direction. So what happened is that the particle B is going to fall into the state up or down in the set direction. On the other hand, if Alice change her mind and make a measurement in the X direction, system B is going to fall into the uh, up and down, but now in the X direction. Um, what, is, what actually surprised EPR or uh, also which actually become clear in showing a paper was that uh, the state up and down in set direction and X direction are in some sense incompatible because they are either state of uh, non commuting observables. We will be a bit more clear about this. Why should one be surprised about that at all? Mm. Yeah, so uh, shortly after the EPR paper uh, showing a published uh, uh, a paper which also uh, contains a correspondence from Schrodinger with uh, several people, as I already told you, uh, clarify the notion uh, of, uh, well, clarify the phenomena, and he uh, clearly uh, showed that the phenomena is kind of rather generic uh, in the following sense. Well, it's not any, anything special about the X or Z direction. You actually can write the state up to some uh, unitary or some phase vector also, you can write it in this form, in uh, the up and down superposition in any direction. And it, now what it means is the following. If Alice here try to rotate her measurement to make measurement in uh, some other direction in different way, then something seems to be rotated here. So the, the way that the wave function of uh, at both sides is, is going to rotate accordingly. Whether this is a real physical effect, we, we will discuss this a bit uh, later on. However, there's clearly some notion of rotating of the wave function. So now, uh, from the modern point of view, the problem of showing a common, although it's interesting, problem is that it's only uh, talking about a pure state. <coughs> and we know that if something is only true for pure state, uh, one has to be uh, considered its validity. Because in reality, we actually always work with mixed state. So it's not only the problem of generality, but it's actually the problem of principle that we have to talk about mixed state. Um, so let's consider the simplest situation where we have the mixed state, which is the same maximally uh, mixed state, uh, single state we had before. Now we mix with the maximally mixed state uh, here with some problem with dp here. Uh, now what happened is that if now I just make a measurement in some n direction, the direction n here, both system is going to collapse into the up and down state again. However, it's not completely polarized in the up and down direction, but only a mixed state up and down. So you have the, the up or down state here, but you also have some part which is mixed there. Uh, so the picture looks a bit like this. For P equal to, uh, to one, you have the complete uh, oh, noiseless steering. But then if the P increase, uh, P decrease, then the uh, steering become noisy and noisier. And now we ask the question, uh, is the fact that Alice can steer up to the state up and down, but now it's not completely up and down, but only a mixed state up and down, is this still surprising in some sense, or whether, whether surprise actually disappear? So apparently here, there should be no surprise at all. Here, here is, we kind of agree that it have some uh, fact which is surprising and in what sense they are incompatible in general. <coughs> so now if we, we come back to think about the uh, stronger statement and also uh, einstein polinski um, thought experiment, the core of the problem is that the statement is actually talking about quantum state. And the point is that quantum state is not something we directly see. What we see is actually we see the measurement outcome. So we make measurement on the quantum state and we see the outcome instead of seeing directly the state. Um, so in reality, uh, if someone say, say that some particular system in, is in some state, in order to verify it, you actually need multiple copy of the same state in order to verify such a statement. And what you have to do is to actually make several different measurements on the same system 
and re repeat it several times in order in order to reconstruct the state of the system uh, in the uh, uh, in the statement. Um, so, so with this in mind, uh, here's the uh, here's the protocol where. Um, where you can verify the, 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 the experiment, the steering experiment of, uh, of EPI. Uh, here's the protocol. So just imagine that maybe I'm Alice and you are both. This is maybe the easiest way to, to actually imagine. And I, I have a quantum state and try to convince you that I can sort of steer that state from a distance. So what I have to do is I have to prepare uh, the, so many copies of the same state. I, I will have, give you half of the of, of the particle that I prepare. And because I declare that I can steer the system, uh, so I, I actually ask you to choose a direction of the choice. So, and you make your direction and ask me to make the measurement in that direction. Um, as long as I make the measurement in that direction, I can announce that the system now is, in, is steered into a particular state uh, uh, according, to, uh, according to this picture. For example, if I make measurement in that this direction the system is going to, to collapse there. Uh, and what you have to do is to do tomography, because now you have a multiple copy of the state, you can do the tomography to actually verify the steel state as I announced. Is it a bit clear what I'm saying here? So in, in this way you can verify the, the phenomena of steering which referring referring to the steering of the state. However, there's a, uh, a loophole, let's say, or a way for, for me to actually cheat. If the steering is too noisy, and actually the noise threshold turns out to be one half here, so consider the gate of P equal to one half here. So what I can do is not preparing a multiple copy of the same uh, entangled state, bipartite state. What I can do is just do a random pure state on the block sphere, and I just send, them, send you a random pure state on the block sphere. And what happens when you ask me to make a measurement in, 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 say in this direction, I just do the following. I just uh, divide the block sphere into two parts. So you have the upper hemisphere and the lower hemisphere. And everything in the upper part, I say that is in the, this up state here. And the, everything in the lower part, I say is in the lower part here, in, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the down state here. And what happens when you do tomography, or both does tomography, is that he has to to actually average over own possible state on this hemisphere. And once you average over on this possible state, you discover exactly this noisy state up with, uh, with uh, P equal to one half. Is it clear? Uh, that is, okay, I can do some kind of cheating in this case. Okay, so this is, when this, the cheating of this guy is possible, uh, the state is said to be uh, unsteerable. So you have an uh, unsteerable state. When there's no way for you to cheat, there's no distribution you can choose, there's no way to divide the block sphere uh, so that you can, you can simulate this conditional state. The, the state has, uh, the bipartite state is said to be a steerable state. So this uh, uh, intuition, intuitive concept of, uh, of, 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 of steerability. I can also put it in a more mathematical language, which is more general, but I actually decide to skip this. To, uh, unless you have a question or you want to describe the, or explain the detail here. Is it everything here? At least the concept, I hope, is uh, clear enough. Yeah. Okay, so I can jump to the part uh, which uh, we try to answer the question, why quantum staring is interesting and why people nowadays are still interested in this concept. Um, the thing is the following, quantum steering when it uh, discovered in 2000, uh, 2007, uh, it actually gives a much better characterization of, of, of the concept quantum correlation, which I will explain in detail later. Um, it also has nice connection to uh, well-known fin, other fin of quantum information, say measurement incompatibility or sub-channel uh, discrimination. It also induces uh, uh, the concept or generalize the concept uh, to simulate by independent quantum information processing. Uh, I can try to explain the first point. Uh, if I have time, I can mention a bit of the, uh, the, the, 
second and the third point here. Um, so what, what do we mean by uh, characterizing uh, quantum uh, correlation? Probably Alfred uh, shortly mentioned that a certain state allows you to violate the band inequality. Uh, those states are said to be uh, band law local. Uh, some other states do not allow you to violate any, any band inequality. Those states are called band local, or uh, is also called, um, can be modeled by local hidden variable model. Um, so in some sense, the states that are band local are more correlated than states that are band, uh, band, band local. Uh, but this is not the only uh, kind of uh, correlation we, uh, we know uh, nowadays. Uh, during the 80s, people re realized that there's other type of correlation we can talk about, namely uh, separable state. This uh, roughly uh, um, referring to the, to the maximum correlation you can have with uh, um, local operation and classical communication between, between the two parties. And it's, it's, it's well known that uh, separable state, um, which are strictly subset of the set of band local state. There are a lot of theory uh, that go entanglement theory allow you to characterize this set of separable state rather well. However, there's very less, much less theory allows you to characterize this boundary of, of band local states. Uh, what comes to the scene when steering comes about is that steering uh, or steerable state turns out to be some subset in between uh, separable state and band local state. Um, and there's some advantage of being uh, uh, intermediate between them. First, it has some richer structure than the separable state that we want to study. Uh, second, it's easier to work with than band local state. Uh, it, in fact, it's so much easier that a lot of problem which was not so before, become solvable in this context of, uh, of steerable state. By the way, unsteerable state are co also co uh, state can be modeled by local hidden uh, state model. So sometimes it's denoted by L8H here, here's LHV. What is LHS? Uh, local hidden state model. Yeah, the, the other one is local hidden variable. Local hidden state refer to the fact that I can model the steering uh, by sending sending you the state randomly on the proxy, okay. which the information clearly hidden from you. So, so it's, 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 it's hidden. Um, yeah, so this is a bit of uh, more mathematical detail. So, but I skip that again. Um, so, so why being intermediate is turned out to be uh, an advantage. Uh, is, the, the thing is, is, is the following. If you look at the, uh, the papers that prove band locality before the concept of quantum steering, uh, for example, Wegler paper or Barrett uh, paper, which prove band uh, locality of certain state, it turns out that they are all actually proof of unsteerability. So also the concept was not formulated at that time. The proof turned out to be naturally formulated. So what I... I was, uh, what I'm, I was saying is the following. So people try to prove that some state is falling into this area. What they actually do is to actually prove that the state is falling into this green area instead of uh, the gener generic area here. Proving a state falling into this area is so much easier than proving, uh, proving the boundary here. Is it, is it clear what I'm saying? The, the question of, of whether a state's fell uh, I, I, well, I'm not sure it's, it's proven NP hat. This is maybe Alfred knows better. Okay. I mean, it's either generally believed or I don't know. I, I thought a Russian at Los Alamos had proven it. But, but then that would mean that the unsteerable states is not NP high. Um, this is also not proven. Uh, what I can say is the phone. Well, the exact boundary is also. Okay, I, I show you a bit later. So, so um, what happened is the following. Now, if you say, uh, here's my come to the question. So first, if you consider own possible measurement at Alice's side, maybe it's a bit difficult. So pe what people do is to assume that Alice cannot do own possible measurement, but only limited to, say, X and Y and Z, for example. So a finite number of measurement. So if you limit Alice 
to final number of measurement, the problem of determining steerability is turns out to be a uh, an SDP problem, a semi-definite program, and uh, so it's rather easy to solve directly on the computer. Although this is actually increased exponentially with the number of measurement. Um, what we add to the scenes is that um, actually it doesn't need to uh, be uh, to restrict at least to finite number of measurement. Recently, we realized that you can also work with arbitrary projective measurement. You can also with, with work with the question. Although in this case, it's not an exact uh, algorithm. It's asymptotic. It's, uh, it's an asymptotic uh, algorithm which allows you to, to determine the boundary rather well. For example, in this case, this is a real cross section of two qubit uh, state. If, using the PPT uh, partial transposition, uh, positive partial transposition criterion, you can plot the boundary of separable state quite well. And we also int introduce the techniques of asymptotic uh, technique to actually determine the boundary of uh, steerable state, which rather high accuracy here. The algorithm is actually polynomial, but it's only asymptotic. So in a sense, uh, we have no proof that it's uh, not NP hat, but it's asymptotically polynomial. Is, is it answering your question? Yeah. So going a bit more into the uh, applied direction, I will uh, explain uh, only uh, the idea of uh, the problem that uh, quantum steering was very useful in solving this problem. Uh, the problem is the following. Um, you know that I already mentioned that you have separable state, separable state which is here, and band local state, or L8V, which is here. Uh, apart from that, you have uh, in entanglement theory, people are interested in a class of entangled state, but it's very supposed to be very weakly entangled state, which is around here. It's called bow entangled state. The exact definition is that bow entangled state are those state you cannot distin. Uh, so the conjecture, so during the 90s, Perez, Perez actually formulated a con conjecture said that those very weakly entangled state, bow entangled state, bow entangled state should not violate any band inequalities. Um, recently, uh, with the uh, with the help of a technique from quantum steering. Uh, people are able to actually disprove this, uh, this conjecture. And here's the step of the disproof. Um, the first step is actually to upgrade this conjecture to a stronger conjecture. We said that uh, those state, uh, bow and tangled state, are so weak that they are even unsteerable. So it's even in a smaller set than the band local state. Um, and this is, have some advantage, because now you can try to construct a counter example to this stronger version. Uh, because um, determining steerability is some sort of a, a SDP problem. Um, and then uh, for, for a class of power entangled state, you also have an SDP to check that. So you actually have two SDP to alternate, and that's, and, and that's more or less it. And then you alternate the SDP, end of the day, you end up with a state which is uh, steerable but power entangled. And then uh, the next step is to show that the, those state violate urban inequalities. So this is uh, uh, discussed in this uh, paper. Is, how much time do I have? Five minutes? Uh, OK, in the next five minutes, I will uh, explain uh, something about uh, the role of uh, generalized measurement uh, in quantum non-locality, which uh, I'm involved a bit in this. Um, so generalized measurement, uh, well, for most of you, maybe for talking about measurement, people th think about projective measurement, where you project, say, so speed into up state or down state. However, this is not the notion, the only notion of measurement. Uh, the other way of, uh, of making measurement, for example, if you have one spin, uh, uh, you can put another spin next to it and make the me measurement on the whole system. Now we have a system of four dimensions, so we have a measurement of four outcomes. But now it threw, threw away the antenna, you have four outcomes on the, on, the, on, the, on the original system. This is uh, roughly how uh, generalized measurement uh, uh, implement. And the question is, now the following, if generalized measurement actually, actually change the quantum correlation that we are defining. Um, if, you, if we 
only limit to positive measurement, the problem can be formulated in this way. So we have uh, Alice and both which are correlated, uh, not correlated either. So you have Alice and both here. They are not connected. Either in the sense of they are, uh, they are separable or they are unsteerable or they are band local. And now you ask the question, if you put, uh, if Alice add a state here, maybe C, this, D, is this the whole system as thin uncorrelated or not? This is uh, roughly the question we are uh, asking. Uh, from my perspective, this is kind of a fundamental question one, one, one would like to answer. Um, it turns out that the answer for the case of separability is kind of trivial. Uh, this is, uh, the answer is trivially no. This is quite easy to show. For panel locality, it was so difficult that, the, that at most people can just have some belief in different, uh, in, in different possibility. For example, some people believe that it changed uh, the, uh, it, it can turn a bad local state into a bad non local state. Some people believe that it does not, and some people actually switch between A and B, and I know at least one people who, do, who does this. Um, okay, now what is new with uh, steerability is that with quantum steerability, this belief is not only belief anymore, we actually can make some evidence to, sh and currently the evidence is pointing to the possibility B, that general measurement doesn't actually doesn't change the, 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 the quantum correlation of the system. Um, yeah, actually uh, there's reference here, but somehow it's hidden, I'm s s sorry for that. <laughs> but actually it's, uh, here says Wegner paper, and here's our paper, so, okay. Okay, so uh, because time is up, I can actually skip this to last part and jump directly to the conclusion. Um, so I hope I would like to convey that quantum steering or steerability is a natural reformulation of the original uh, einstein polonsky experiment, more or less. Um, and I would like also to point out that quantum steering uh, actually set an eye on the structure of quantum correlation. I would hope that this is more or less clear. And they also have connection to many often. And unfortunately, I didn't manage to talk about this, but uh, this is also written in our uh, review on, on the topic. So this is, if you are interested, you can read it here. And this is actually a film that people are still working on uh, quite actively. And I'm still expecting more structure understanding or more connection to be found in the near future. Yeah. Thank you for the attention.